I met Doug around 1981. I was studying mycology at the uh, University of Nervic. <laughs> that would be the bicycle habitat in Chelsea. Uh, so long ago, it probably wasn't even called Chelsea then. Educators uh, might have thought of a finishing school for those who worked there, teaching them how to act uh, with the public under the guise of being bike mechanics. Uh, as it turned out, it was more of a starting school. Uh, Charlie McCorkle, having shown an astonishing knack of hiring people who went on to real success and accomplishment, Oh, of the very few I came to know who worked there, one became an engineer, one a dentist, one a computer programmer uh, with a master's of mathematics, one who quit a promising career as a pro cyclist to uh, return to college to study Victorian poetry, and of course, George. Um, I pissed away hours and hours there in, in today's computer parlance, the third one. I'm not a bitch way of bars, but there was some TV series set in a bar uh, where the regulars would just hang and be buds. Bike Habitat was like that. It was the entertainment capital of my world. <laughs> and just by force of his personality, Doug was the resident entertainer. <laughs> by terms funny to outrageous. He evolved, but he never stopped cycling, and he never stopped being funny to outrageous. He, in fact, did become an entertainer. He likely spoke to you of his uh, riding and camping in his beloved Adirondacks. Maybe he shared with you his great satisfaction, even pride, in riding from the city to his childhood home in Wappinger's Falls in Poughkeepsie without stopping. Uh, you know Geneva in upstate New York. Um, what you likely don't know was one of his rides that started in Geneva, where he rode with his fellow bike habitat uh, mechanic, John Mastriani, the rider he most admired. John wrote me yesterday, the two of them rode into a small town, stopped at a cheese shop. Doug was disconcerted to find they sold only one kind of cheese. <laughs> and, and it was very stinky. It was Doug's, uh, Tina informs me, Doug hated stinky cheese. <laughs> it was Doug's bad luck that the only cheese they had was Gruyere. Uh, incidentally, the name of the town they were in was Gruyere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have said it was Geneva, Switzerland, not Geneva, New York, as they were riding. <laughs> How good a rider was he? As recently as September, he pissed me off yet again for so smoothly, so evenly staying on his pedals negotiating the most narrow spaces, whereas I would put my foot down, not having the balls or the skill to thread my way through what he effortlessly did. Um, there are surely others who will talk today about his musical ability. I can't talk to that, but none of his musical friends uh, with whom I spoke at the hospital knew that he was a trombonist, and in fact, he went to college to study trombone. And there are surely others of you who will talk today of his annual Christmas Caroline Partisan, we've heard that already, uh, going from shelter to shelter, uh, Caroline the disinherited. Um, I liked a lot that while he knew I would never ever accept the invitation after having done so once many, many years ago, he never stopped inviting me. And that was an act of grace, I thought. There are others who will talk to you today about his improvisational humor. I am so sorry, I can't recall to you the hundreds of bits that uh, he did. But I do want to tell you this one. Um, he was hired to be a put-on waiter at an upscale party in Connecticut, I think it was. So there he is in a tuxedo, circulating among these well-off guests with canapes on his silver tray. He stops by one woman and asks, would she like one? She reaches to the tray to choose one. He stops her and says, <laughs> that, that's not very good. <laughs> Holding his tray in front of another guest while offering him a petty four, he himself snatches one off the tray and pops it in his <laughs> And in a third outrage, he spills the pastries onto the floor and puts them back on the tray. <laughs> <laughs> offering them. <laughs> Is there anyone in the world who will be more pleased by Doug's death than Donald Trump? <laughs> Was there ever a more eviscerating mimic of him? Which brings me, and 
Joe touched on this already. I'm so sorry you took the initiative here. I felt it was mine. Which was actually <laughs> Doug's capacity for outrage. I found comfort, actually great kinship, and his not merely feeling indignation for errant drivers, pedestrians, and even cyclists, but in his unhesitatingly expressing it to them. A less fine way of expressing what I mean is, he got really pissed off at them and let them know and know why. But unlike me, always in a sincerely corrective way, in consideration drove him half nuts drives me all the way. <laughs> uh, which leads to his politics. Did he uh, ever speak to you, as he often did to me, of his upset, sadness, and frustration at the decline, as he saw it, and the coming collapse of our standards in society? He was surprisingly well informed. I say surprisingly because there were so many more aspects to his personality than his politics. Okay, that, that really is all I want to say about him, but I do want to share this with you. Um, it's something that he said to me uh, about climbing, about biking up hills. Um, and he spoke of it only with reference to cycling technique uh, and a very narrow frame of advice intended strictly for cycling. But whether he realized it or not, it has application way beyond cycling to all of life. Uh, sloth that I am, I tend to slow down, even stop pedaling and coast before the top of a hill. I haven't done that since 11.20 this morning. Um, and certainly coast some distance down when I reach the top. His advice, so broader than cycling, when you reach the top, keep climbing. One final thing. Um, it's long occurred to me that the smallest thing you do for a person uh, in his lifetime, just opening a door, helping someone out with a coat, is greater than the greatest thing you can do for him after he dies, such as naming a highway or, or, or an airport for him. Um, here's something I'm asking all of us to do, and not for Doug, but because we've come to love Tina um, and value her. Each of us must keep her not merely in our thoughts, but in our lives.